Myanmar, a land of golden pagodas. Rivers, paddy fields and Buddhism dominate the lives of this country's people, who are made up of a variety of ethnic groups. And behind the bamboo curtain is a sleepy fairy tale land. Yangon, a river city and the capital of Myanmar. A country surrounded by India, China, Laos and Thailand. Few cities in Asia boast such a fascinating melee of tribes and cultures. A tranquil harmony of churches, pagodas, Hindu temples and mosques. Four stairways that are directed towards the four cardinal points lead to the country's national sanctuary, the legendary Shui Dagon Pagoda. There are numerous myths and legends of the valuable decor and various treasures that are located within one of the most famous religious buildings in the Buddhist world. The tall, gilded Great Stupa is the main and magnificent focal point of the Yangon Sanctuary. Close by is the Chowtat Ki Pagoda that contains one of the largest prone Buddha statues in the world. Its length makes up for its lack of artistry as it's 70 meters long. East of the monastery is the Bo Tatong Pagoda that dates back to before Christ. Bo means officer and Tatong means 1,000. A thousand military officers escorted a number of Buddhist monks from India. They brought with them Buddhist relics for this pagoda. The markets have always played an important role in Yangon and Scott Market is the largest. Since the country's independence, it's now also known as Boyoki Ong San. The Kaba Ai Pagoda is also known as the Pagoda of Global Peace. Monks from all over the Buddhist world once came here over a period of two years. The sanctuary was built for the 6th Buddhist Synod when the 2500th birthday of Buddha was commemorated here. The Sule Pagoda lies at the heart of the city. Radiant shrines surround a 48 meter high gilded stupa in the center of a large roundabout. It's a useful landmark when you're finding your way around the city. The pagoda was built prior to Yangon's existence. It is believed to date back to the time of the Indian king Ashoka and was built by monks. The royal park extends around the royal lake, a place of calm and contemplation. Here one can relax beneath the shade of huge old trees. The stone Karawiak ship in the middle of the lake looks astonishingly true to life. In the evening there's wonderful food as well as a variety of traditional music and dance. Various ethnic groups perform their skills. The dancers leap across the stage in front of the spectators. The scene is of a fairy tale land populated by princes and princesses. Now we visit the most famous street of colonial times, the Strand. The finest colonial buildings once stood here, such as the present day Strand Hotel. This splendid building was renovated at the beginning of the 1990s. A street of nostalgia located between a former world of luxury and the banks of the Yangon River. The Yangon River is still the city's main lifeline. It connects the Andamanen Sea with the busy metropolis. 
It's all go from early in the morning until late in the evening. Fishing boats move to and fro with cargo being loaded while there's cooking beneath the open sky. There are several ferry services that also travel to many of the more remote locations along the river. It's like traveling back in time to the colonial days of Rangoon, a fascinating city with a captivating charm. In Yangon, the early morning is the best time to travel to the nearby city of Bego. Bego was once the capital of the second Burmese realm. It was thought by Europeans to be the most magnificent city in the east, a fact highlighted by its many splendid monuments. This once glorious epoch is manifested by the Shui Modo Pagoda. Although damaged by several devastating earthquakes, after each one, it was lovingly restored. This sacred building was constructed in order to store precious relics within its walls. In fact, two of the Buddha's hairs that some traders brought here from India. When its large river filled up with silt, Bego fell into decline. But the city has retained its great cultural heritage. Long corridors adorned with numerous paintings lead to one of the pagoda's main attractions. The huge prone Shui Taliyang Buddha. 55 meters long and 16 meters tall, the most beautiful prone Buddha in Myanmar. Beyond the city is another fine sanctuary. The Kyaikpun Pagoda that was built in 1476. Four Buddha figures seated back to back stare relentlessly at the four points of the compass. Here, both farmers and fishermen lead a contented way of life. The Kya Kalo Pagoda has been well preserved and the corridors of its inner sanctuary are frequented by the faithful. Magnificently adorned Zetis are yet another example of the huge diversity of Buddhist architecture. We now travel on a canal to take a closer look at the landscape and its people. The riverbank is flanked by one house after another, each with a boat lying at anchor. The streets of this region are its waterways. We've arrived at Tuante, a typical river delta town. Both people and goods exit the ship and new passengers come on board. This is a truly rural place. It's reminiscent of those stories told by Rudyard Kipling about this exotic country. Both horse and ox carts travel the sandy streets to the Shui Shan Do Pagoda on the edge of the village. The 76 meter high sanctuary is thought to be 2,000 years old. It's believed that Tuante was first inhabited by the Mon people. This region is known for its pottery. It's still made in the traditional way without any modern tools. The loam from the riverbed is mixed with sand and then moulded on potter's wheels into various shapes and sizes.
The women of these small villages make joysticks and the men tend to the fertile land using simple methods. Glass blowing has a long tradition here. And in the street, we encounter dancers and musicians who are accompanying a marriage party. In Le Lake, the magical beauty of this body of water has attracted and fascinated people since time immemorial. This unique lake is home to the Intas, the sons of the lake, who moved here from the south of the country. A fisherman prepares to cast his net. But the conical bamboo frame is an unusual looking net. The fishermen detect the presence of fish by the rising bubbles that come from below. It is believed that the Intas settled in the lake region in the 18th century in order to escape the wars and constant oppression that they had encountered in the south of the country. Today there are 37 villages around the lake with a total population of about 100,000. Maing Tau is well known for its traditional market and is popular with both local people and tourists alike. In recent years, several Parong families have also settled here. Water lilies cover the surface of the water and the floating gardens appear. These unique gardens consist of a 100 meter long and around 2 meter wide carpet of water hyacinths that are densely interwoven. Tomatoes, cucumbers and beans are cultivated here. Even though the village of Kela contains a large variety of splendid buildings, its main feature is located just outside the actual village. The Jumping Cats Monastery of Nga Pe Kiong has become well known for the ring jumping tricks performed by its well-trained cats. When a fertile layer of soil has formed, the gardens are towed to open water. Iwama is the largest village in this region. Here, the waterways, timber buildings and bridges are a fascinating sight. The Shan, who originate from this region, are a constant source of fascination to visiting tourists. Today, the Shan people are the largest minority in Myanmar and make up 9% of the total population. On our journey to Nampan is the village of Talei and the Fang Do U Sanctuary. Even though the pagoda of the Royal Bach was only built in the 1960s, it's now one of the main shrines, not only on the lake, but in the whole of Myanmar. The village of Inpokon is renowned far beyond Myanmar for its high quality silk. Virtually all of the silk weaving mills are open to the public. The old looms are a reminder of bygone times. The Inta people have learned to live in harmony with nature. The village of Indian can be reached by boat and is a popular tourist destination. The 
The main attraction is located outside the village, the Alon Sital Sanctuary, with hundreds of decayed stupas of Shan design. The entire region seems to possess a unique and magical energy. The Shan State Express, a sonorous name for a unique train that travels to the north of Myanmar and to the legendary kingdom of the Shan. The railroad travels in a zigzag up the mountains. This enables it to negotiate severe slopes that would otherwise be impossible for it to climb vertically. It provides a fascinating insight into the culture and everyday life of the Shan people. The train stops frequently at various small stations. Myanmar, they're proud of this century-old railway line, once owned by the Irrawaddy State Railway Company. On the 1st of May, 1877, the first steam train in Burma set out from the main station in Yanon. At first, the line only went as far as Pie, but later a whole network of lines was created. The city of Pien Uwin, that is also known as Maimo, was once a British military base. Even today, the city still has a certain air of nostalgia. Here, passengers are offered various refreshments, as the journey normally takes more than 12 hours. The fertile soil of the nearby environs of Maimo have made this region into a successful agricultural area. For the country's rural population, the train is often the only means by which they can travel to urban areas, as much of the country is without a proper network of roads. Picturesque hills line the route that is close to a famous military name, the Burma Road. On our journey, we travel through many small agricultural villages. Their inhabitants consist of the Shan people. Our next stop, Shipo train station, is situated outside the actual town. In addition to its historical significance as a former center of royal power, it's particularly known for its many celebrations and events. The inhabitants of Shipo are fond of their festivals. A large number of vehicles are imaginatively decorated on these occasions. Of mythological significance, animals play an important role in the country's traditional festivals. Around 12 kilometers beyond Xipo is the entrance to one of the most famous attractions in this northern Shan state, the legendary Baguio Pagoda. Surrounded by a magnificent wall, it is thought that this sanctuary is more than 700 years old. Just as in Xipo, traditional celebrations are also popular here. An important festival takes place each year around Tabong, the time of the full moon in February and March, and it's the highlight of the town's cultural calendar. Even today, the beautiful decorations of the various temples and shrines has lost nothing of its atmospheric splendor of bygone times. The 
large number of donations and candles testify to the great importance that the Borgio Pagoda has for the local population in this northern region of Myanmar. Lasio is both enchanting and modern. The laid-back atmosphere of Shipur is not to be found in this town that's 900 meters above sea level. For several centuries, Lasio has been a commercial town with close trading connections with China that is only around 100 kilometers away. The local market here is well worth a visit. The sight of so many goods is quite breathtaking. Fruit, spices, fresh vegetables, you name it. Here, everything is of the highest quality. People from both the nearby mountain region and surrounding villages visit the city's most famous market, Meoma She Market. A little off the main tourist route is Lasio's most famous sanctuary, the Mansu Pagoda, built around a century ago. The Kuan Yin San Jos House Monastery and its adjacent temple highlight the influence of the Chinese population in the religious life of this city. Various sacred sculptures and illustrations of ancient mythological creatures provide an insight into local crafts and arts. Even though most of the buildings here are quite recent, having been built in the past 50 years or so, they're still most impressive. Kuan Yin San House, that was only built a couple of years ago, is not only the largest Chinese monastery in Shan State, but in the whole of Myanmar. The Tilashin nuns are dressed in pinkish white garns. They come here for food. And the local farmers lead their animals through Moniwa a town on the Chinwin River. In the nearby surroundings of this agricultural trading center is the newly built Taubude Pagoda. It is guarded by two white elephants. With its 471 small stupas, the terrace of the main building looks like a veritable forest of pagodas. In front of the gates of the temple complex, it's always busy. But within the complex, all is peaceful and serene. Here, several gods are worshipped. There are 10,000 Buddha figures situated in numerous niches, donated by the faithful. Within the main building are various colorful Buddha statues positioned close to a number of gold and red arches. A magnificent sight. A tiny road leads to the Bodhi Tatong Pagoda, a huge complex with various extraordinary statues and buildings. Quite spectacular. Gods ride on horses and Buddhas sit beneath stone sunshades. From a tall watchtower there's a wonderful view across the surrounding landscape and the huge Buddha statue is plain to see.
As the name 1000 Bode trees suggests, a thousand of these trees were planted here and the Buddhas placed between them. After visiting this place of worship, some of the local people travel home in horse carts. Mingun, a remarkable village situated on the banks of the Ayawari River. It highlights the megalomania of King Bodopaya. This journey into bygone times begins in one of the country's traditional ox carts. Most of the buildings in Mingun date back to the ambitious plans of one man. The ox cart transports its passengers to one of the most interesting buildings in Mingun, the Mingun Paya. It was designed to be the world's largest pagoda. Huge numbers of workers built this 72 meter wide and 50 meter high building. Originally, it was planned to be even larger than it is now. At a height of 152 meters, it was designed to be the tallest building in the world. When the king died, construction of this impressive building came to a halt. Three years prior to his reign, the king dedicated this sacred building to his favorite and highly religious wife, Shinbayumi, who was deceased. The outstanding architecture of the pagoda is closely associated with Hindu Buddhistic cosmology and therefore with Mount Meru, the center of the world. Seven wave-shaped terraces symbolize the character of the mountains that surround Mount Meru and the Sulemani Palace that is located on its summit. This important, legendary palace is inhabited by the Nat King Tagyamin, who is also called Indra in Hinduism and Saka by Buddhists. However, Mingun is not only known for its impressive architecture, the village is home to the world's heaviest bell. A few kilometers upstream are the hills of Sagaing, the center of the Buddhist religion. The history of Sagaing dates back to the beginning of the 14th century, when the royal city of Bagan fell and Sagaing became the new capital of Burma. However, its importance as a center of power was short-lived. The splendid Kang Mudor Pagoda, the most famous sanctuary in Sagaing, is located outside the monastery area. The lower of the three circular terraces of the Singhalese monument contains the statues of numerous deities. The shining white stupa towers up 46 meters into the sky. In 1783, King Bodha Paya had the Aung Mai La Kwa Paya built on the site of his former palace. The figures of two huge lions and various other gods appear to guard the sanctuary beside the river. In 
In the garden-like area around the pagoda are several small shrines of impressive beauty, a place of silence and meditation. On the western hills are some of the most elegant and splendid monastery complexes. Forty-five Buddha figures stand in a semicircle, dignified and benign. According to legend, Buddha, in an earlier incarnation as a rabbit king, visited the summit of this mountain. Thus, the Sun U Ponya Shinpaya was constructed, including its 30 meter high golden chedi. Out of the rich green of the surrounding hills of Sagaing, the golden spires and cupolas of the proud buildings rise high into the sky. An enchanting view. Amarapura, the immortal city, was the first of the country's royal cities. Many houses contain weaving looms at which young women produce traditional silk cloth. On the edge of the town is one of the country's largest monasteries, the Mahagandayan Monastery. At one time, more than a thousand monks lived here. The most important moment in the life of a young Burmese male is Shin Pyu, his admittance to a monastery as a novice monk. Throughout the centuries, the monastery has not only been a sacred place, but also a school in which many have learned to both read and write. Since a dam was built there, the lake has contained water throughout the entire year for the pleasure of both fishermen and the local duck population. The 1.2 kilometer long Ubien Bridge is quite a rarity, the longest teak wood bridge in the world. Around 200 years ago, former mayor U Bien had this bridge built with teak wood from his former palace. In the light of the setting sun, the bridge is an inspiring sight, even though some of its wood is showing signs of age. Nowhere else has seen the rise and fall of so many royal cities. It was once known as the center of the world, and today it is the religious and financial center of this region, Mandalay, the heart of Burmese culture. 2,400 years after the death of Buddha, King Mindon ordered the 150,000 inhabitants of Amarapura to relocate here. An ancient prophecy had to be fulfilled, thus it was necessary to create a new city here. High walls and a moat protect the rectangular complex of the king's golden city. Unfortunately, the palace, as well as the other buildings that were built of teak wood, burned down during the Second World War. Much concrete and corrugated iron was used for the new buildings. The Mahamuni Pagoda is the center of worship. It is also where the Mahamuni Buddha is kept, the country's most highly worshipped Buddhist statue. While the female pilgrims pour water over the tiny Buddhist statues, the men apply gold leaf to the four meter high Mahamuni figure. A 
large number of Burmese craftsmen have settled in the area south of the pagoda. They supply almost the entire country with their finely crafted Buddha figures. The production of gold leaf is carried out according to ancient tradition. Small pieces of gold are beaten out and the resultant foil is then applied to paper. King Mindon also ordered the construction of the Kutodor Pagoda. It was called the largest book in the world. During its seven years of construction, the entire Buddhist doctrine was carved into 729 marble plates. While the palace was under construction, the Sandamuni Pagoda served as the provisional residence of King Mindon. The temple was dedicated to the younger brother of King Kanon. He was killed by King Mindon's sons during a palace revolt. The well-preserved Shui Inbin Monastery is one of the last examples of the traditional monasteries whose splendor once made Mandalay famous. The complex has all the architectural elements of a typical Burmese monastery, but it is its beautiful wood carvings that are the most striking. A tranquil place of contemplation. In the shadow of Mandalay Mountain is the Kyao Togi Paya. It is a replica of the pagoda of the same name in the ancient capital city of Amarapura. The Buddha statue is the center of worship and situated around the four sides of the main shrine stand 20 figures, Buddha's disciples. To the north of the city is the 236 meter high Mandalay mountain that dominates the plains below. As Buddha once lived on this mountain, it is considered to be extremely sacred and thus contains several pagodas and shrines. Huge snakes protect this holy place from evil spirits. Buddha once predicted the creation of a large city at the foot of the mountain and he was perhaps inspired by the wonderful sunsets that can be seen here. Our journey on the legendary Ayawari River travels from Mandalay to Bagan. Its longest tributary has its source in Tibet in the southeast of the Himalayas. The Ayawari also flows through China prior to reaching Myanmar. The ferry to Bagan frequently stops to allow new passengers to board. Landing stages are few and far between. At the beginning of the 20th century, the Ayawari boasted the largest fleet of steamboats in the world. And even today, a good number of them still remain. The importance of this river is highlighted by the many small temple buildings and sanctuaries that are situated along the river bank. For the people of Myanmar, this river has always been an important lifeline, a vital thoroughfare for the entire country. The 
Ayawari also influenced the early history of Myanmar. Numerous immigrants followed the natural course of the river. In addition to its historical and cultural significance, the Ayawari also formed the backbone of Myanmar's transport system. Several large waves of immigrants from Tibet and China traveled south down the river. The country's first immigrants were members of the mountain people of the Mon tribe that settled here in around 3000 BC. During the first century BC, the people of the Pu tribe reached today's Myanmar, where they created several small city-states. According to ancient Chinese history, the Pu were an extremely peace-loving people. But as the city-states never came together to form a larger kingdom, they were susceptible to invasion. In the middle of the 9th century, the armies of the Nan Zhao Kingdom reached the Ayawari and eventually ended the reign of the Pu tribe. It is only in recent years that foreign tourists have been allowed here, but today there's even a luxurious boat that is available for exclusive river cruises. The river gained literary fame due to the famous British author Rudyard Kipling and his poem On the Road to Mandalay. Our journey in land leads to a fascinating place, Mount Popa, an extinct volcano and home of the Nat people. A number of steep steps lead up to the temple, past several souvenir stalls and resting places where monkeys wait for both entertainment and food. The monkeys observe each visitor closely. They react at the slightest provocation and are real villains, but actually they're quite harmless. And there's yet another pagoda. From here there's a fascinating view across the plains of Bergan and over to the dense mountain forests. The pagoda with its stupas and tazongs was built on the initiative of monk U Pi Sone. It contains the colorful spiritual world of Myanmar. Each morning a warrior brought flowers from the floral mountain to the king in Bagan, until he fell in love with a female demon who gave birth to two sons. Such legends make it easy to understand why the people wished to remain faithful to their time-honored deities, even though Buddhism was the new faith 37 Nats originated. Buddhist doctrines help to support an uncertain future. However, it is the Nats who rule here. Here, religion is an enigma, often dark and confusing. Began. 
the country's ancient capital city. Prior to visiting the largest area of Buddhist ruins in the world, here visitors can enjoy both traditional puppet shows and dance. Classical myth and legend make up this theatrical treat, of which each puppeteer is responsible for up to 60 strings. Traditional arts and crafts are carried out here in family workshops, in which various bamboo products are created. Here, varnishing is a traditional skill. The walled sanctuary of Dhamma Yangi Pato is one of the most outstanding temples of this ancient city. Of all this region's magnificent sacred buildings, the golden Shvezikon Pagoda, located close to the river, is quite outstanding. Close to Bagan city walls is yet another remarkable building, the majestic Ananda Pato Temple. dedicated to four Buddhas. The rise of Bagan to become the capital of the Burmese kingdom and the then Buddhist metropolis began in the middle of the 11th century under King Anurata. Situated on the riverbank is what is believed to be Bagan's oldest pagoda, Bupaya. Its architecture indicates that it dates back to the time of the Pew. The external design of the Indian Mahabodhi temple highlights the close relationship between the Bagan kings and the rulers of India. During a devastating earthquake in 1975, the Gadopalan temple was damaged more than any other building in Bagan. This region's tallest sacred building, Tat Pinyu, the all-knowing and all-seeing temple, is rather ornate. Even though some of the buildings are still quite exquisite, over the centuries the majority of their valuable treasures and religious works of art has been plundered. But the original dimensions of Bagan are still quite obvious because each temple is located several kilometers from the next. The Shui Gui Temple, the Great Golden Cave. In 1131, King Along Situ built this sanctuary south of the royal palace. The colourful name of this temple, the umbrella, the king and the princes who desire it, referred to an unusual method of choosing the new king. Completed in 1287, the Minga Lazeri Pagoda was the last important monument to be built in Bagan. This marked the decline of the metropolis that once had a population of 200,000. Ineffective kings, financial problems and increasing hostilities created by the Shan in northeast Burma weakened the empire and Kublai Khan and his army also began to dominate the country. The Burmese king's army was crushed by the superior forces of the Kublai Khan. In 1287, Bagan fell to the Mongols.
The temple survived the invasion almost completely undamaged. The Mongols were also of the Buddhist faith. Any journey through Myanmar is a journey into the past, to a hidden world of dreams and mystique. The gateway to paradise is slowly opening up and revealing a splendid land of bygone times.